Ethics and Social Responsibility Our second chapter for Cross-Cultural Management or Intercultural Management Today we will examine Ethics in International Management We will also discuss some of the major issues on ethics and also problems relating to multinational companies in selected countries We will also discuss some of the pressures and actions being taken by selected industrialized countries and also companies for them to be socially and more environmentally responsive to world problems. Towards the end, we'll be able to explain some of the initiatives to, to bring greater accountability to corporate conduct and limit the impacts of corruption around the world. Ethics is the study of morality and standards of conduct and it covers many if not all aspects of your life and in our context international management it will cover a lot of the decision making in international business here we deal a lot with dilemmas that arise from conflicts between ethical standards between countries so we can see this in employment practices especially we see issues like sexual harassment issues on minimum wage, biotechnology issues such as GMO and environmental issues as well. So ethics, it refers to the issue of right versus wrong in legal sense. Of course, we are not getting into law or legal perspective here but we take a look into the decisions in international business or intercultural management through the perspective of ethics so as you can see here it's a balance between what is right and what is wrong and progress it is also related with corporate social responsibility which involves the voluntary actions of a firm to benefit society beyond requirements of law and beyond the direct interest of firm. So what the company, what the multinational company can do to benefit the local society. So we discuss this also because it is closely related to ethics. Corporate social responsibility will concern topics and issues such as working conditions in factories, service centers, as well as environmental impacts of corporate activities. You may have learned this before. This is just a refreshment, especially on ethic theories and philosophy. The first is uh, Kent. Yeah, philosophical tradition whereby individuals have responsibilities based on a core set of moral principles so this goes beyond those of narrow self interest basically saying that we can only have knowledge of things that we can experience another ethical philosophy is Aristotle which focuses on core individual behaviors also focuses on actions and how they express and form individual character. Another basis of ethics is utilitarianism, which means that the greatest good for the greatest number of people is the best choice, given the set of constraints. There's also the Eastern based philosophy. We have touched this before. It views the individual as part of rather than separate from nature. So our decisions will affect nature, will affect the universe and the universe will affect our decisions. In this topic we discuss about human rights. Multinational companies are no stranger to human rights issues. So this is a challenge for multinational companies because there's no currently universally adopted standards to 
what is acceptable and what is not acceptable because there's a large deal of sub subjectivity there's also a culturally biased viewpoints so this covers employment rights this covers investment rights and how to understand this we go back to basic rights human beings have rights to live they have rights to be free from slavery or torture they should be free to have their opinion and express the, their opinion and in general live and work in a non-discriminatory practice environment this sounds too good but actually human rights issues in multinational companies have been going on for a long time and it's still going on okay? issues like modern slavery child slavery they still exist and it is highly related to larger companies like Mars, Nestle and Hershey this is uh, chocolate production this is in Ivory Coast child slavery is a huge problem there because cheap labor rates cheap labor rates meaning cheaper production costs and cheaper production costs meaning that these companies can offer good price for their product which is good for the consumers but at the cost of child slavery at the same time all these companies are actually helping to develop the poor poor village in Ivory Coast so there's a lot of complex issues there but when you look into the main issue or main problem of child slavery a lot of things can be done properly as well okay. this is especially a problem in the cocoa industry especially in African countries so if you are interested in this topic the bigger topic is called modern slavery however there are a lot of companies are doing quite well doing good okay so as you can see here the top 10 most socially responsible companies in 2023 is pictured here number one is a US company number two is a Japanese company okay. basically it is dominated by Japanese and American companies so what does that mean yeah. still talking about Japan although some of the most ethical companies come from Japan Japan as a country they also are experiencing ethical issues especially in international management in Japan there are issues on equal opportunity maybe they, they do not have modern slavery issues maybe they do not have major pollution issues but with regards to human rights they are experiencing equal opportunity issues in general the workplace refuses to hire women or to promote them in management positions the work environment is also hostile maybe not physically hostile it's more towards psychologically hostile because there's still a the traditional role of females and female employees okay. still in gender issues sexual harassment may not be considered a moral issue and this is the perspective on human rights in japan so you can see this in the workplace so workplace harassment 
unequal opportunities, especially in men and women, it is an issue. Okay, this is in Japan, in a Japanese company. Okay. Previous CEO, he is facing allegations of financial misconduct. When we talk about financial misconduct among the top decision makers, usually it's under reporting of income and the use of company asset, meaning there's abuse of asset. So abuse of power basically. So in a Japanese company by a CEO. So is it related to culture? Is it not? Okay, there's something that you can think about. The perspective of equal employment or inequality, especially in the workplace, in Europe they are also experiencing the same thing. So in Europe they are experiencing glass ceiling. What is glass ceiling? It is the inability for women to get to top positions in a lot of companies. So this goes back to gender inequality. There has been some changes, especially in the more wealthy countries in Europe, France, Germany, UK. They've seen an increase in number of women in management, but the number is still low. Of course, this is due to a lot of different factors, but gender inequality is still one of the drivers. In Europe, one of the more well-known cases is the Volkswagen scandal. You can have a look into the case in your own time but basically in the Volkswagen scandal it's more towards not being truthful in production meaning hiding a few information that leads to low quality product so what happened there's an illegal use of software in certain diesel vehicles. This allows them to emit more harmful pollutants than legally allowed. So after investigation, it shows that Volkswagen had installed this software which can only activate the emission controls when the vehicles are being tested. So that's highly unethical. That is abuse to the customers. So you can have a look into it. The issue is called diesel gate, also known as emission gate. This happened around 10 years ago, but it's still an interesting case to look into. Ethics and social responsibility in practice. In practice, you can have a look into employment and business practices. The ethical dilemma here is it is difficult to establish a universal foundation of employment practices because especially in multinational companies conducting business in a different country, Cultures are different, language and how to do things are different. So it is a difficult dilemma especially in deciding working conditions, consecutive work hours and also labour regulations. For instance, some countries, they take Fridays off, usually Muslim countries. Some countries have longer lunch breaks, some countries they do not permit their employees to work for long hours. Some countries do. Another issue is 
in offshoring okay, this is due to differences in labor cost companies investing in a country with cheaper employment minimum wage to take advantage of the lower labor cost so in the home country a lot of people are losing their jobs but in the new host country a lot of people are gaining new jobs so it is complex and people will look into things from different perspective and the issue is on environmental protection and development country based approach on the issue of conservation of natural resources they do it differently for example poor countries are more focused on improving the welfare of their citizens rather than improving the environment economic development is more important than taking care of the environment so you can see this in the environmental Kuznets curve we will look into it later and a lot of companies they violate laws they also jeopardize the environment oil and gas companies are notorious for this a lot of transportation companies as well but we have a lot of innovation now green technology uh, we also have clean technology so things are getting better but rather slowly so what is this curve that we are talking about if the country's population income is lower and if it's getting higher the pollution rates will get higher what is the explanation for it okay how do you get richer and get more polluted okay an example is through multinational company investment companies like oil and gas companies for example okay uh, exxon bp shell they do not come into a host country to take care of the environment they, they want to make money and the implication is environmental implication one of them is pollution but the local people get jobs the local people can in, improve their economic condition but at the same time pollution increases but at one point of time okay, the income still increase but the pollution rates will go lower why multinational companies will exit the country like what a lot of uh, multinational companies are doing to malaysia at the moment a lot of them are divesting or exiting the host country so less pollution but malaysians are getting i won't say richer but the income per capita is getting higher so pollution rates are lower here basically this curve suggests that environmental pollution increase at the beginning of economic growth economic growth has a cost one of them is pollution remember in the during the first few weeks of studying international business one of the negative implications of foreign direct investment and international business is social issues okay, a lot of cultures good and bad coming into a new country and also environmental issues okay, these are the cost so when it passes a certain level of income the economic growth allows environmental remediation improving the environment here multinational companies have a lot of response so in globalization and ethical obligation or responsibilities of multinational companies the question is should the multinational company adopt the regulations in the country of origin 
for those in the country of operation home country based or host country based because what is right in the US may not be right in Malaysia and what is right in Malaysia might, might not be right in the US so doing the right thing is not always easy okay. one of the case that one of the cases that we can look into this is device in Bangladesh always in clothing manufacturing the issue goes back to minimum wage minimum labor cost okay, minimum labor cost in US where Levi's is originated from is much higher than the minimum wage in Bangladesh but this very cheap minimum wage actually produces affordable products then consumers can buy but nevertheless this gives a device uh, quite a bad name once upon a time so how to reconcile ethical differences across culture okay. so we look into the integrative social contracts theory so this defines correct ethical behavior through hypothetical social contract which emphasize the moral understanding of the members of economic system and organization such big words but this theory will help companies to avoid relativism and absolutism what is relativism morality is relative to the norms of one culture let's say I am a Malaysian and I am a CEO of a company in Nigeria so I decide on basically on what is right and wrong from my experience as a Malaysian so that is relativism it is not when compared to the Nigerian culture some things may not click so we go to absolutism and that is a, another problem because according to absolutism there is a certain universal moral principles by which all people's action may be judged so what is wrong and what is right is relative and also it is also black and white some of them is relative some of them is black and white but this will give managers a framework to use when they face a gap between the moral and ethical values in the home country and in the host country so a lot of mistakes done by multinational companies it's relative and absolutist at the same time so they do this through corporate social responsibility and corporate social responsibility can be done the easiest and more evident is through sustainability which is development that meets humanity's needs without harming future generations which leads us to our next subtopic on corporate social responsibility and sustainability one of the best cases to understand this issue is Shell in Nigeria okay. there's an area in Nigeria called Ogoni land it's rich with oil but a lot of ethical misconducts happen there between shell and the key society leaders in ogoni land which led to the murder of around nine people in the area that is human rights at the same time pollution and environmental harm done by the company so issues of ethics one it is linked to the nigerian government related to corruption shell is also aware of its environmental impact it was so bad 
and at one point of time it led for military intervention okay. in Ogoni, Ogoni land you can have a look later okay. locals were unhappy protest happens okay. so this encouraged intervention by security and military forces and actually the parent company in the UK and the Netherlands are actually implicated okay. have a look into the case because it is quite interesting Ogoni 9 is the 9 people who were killed during the whole episode so those are the people who whose lives have been taken in addition to the pollution and environmental harm done by the company as well as the society leaders so here non-governmental organizations or NGOs they play an important part these are private and non-for-profit not-for-profit organizations seeks to serve a society's interests so they focus on social, political and economic issues such as poverty, social justice, education, health and the environment. NGOs have grown in number and power and influence. So this is a good development because they have been urging multinational companies to be more responsive, to address a lot of social needs at the same time making things right in the countries that they are operating in it works because NGO activism has caused major changes in corporate behavior for example NGOs have been very active in promoting fair trade products chocolates is one of the example of fair trade products remember the Ivory Coast chocolate that we have talked earlier okay, we have talked about earlier that is one of the implications of NGO activism a few projects or NGOs save the children, Oxfam, care so these organizations they focus on different things but in general, they focus on a lot of social issues pollution, environment, human rights, children and so on so multinational companies must respond to social and organizational obligations one of the ways to do this is through agreements and codes of conduct that will help to commit MNCs to maintain certain standards one of them is UN Global Compact this is a guidebook they produce a guidebook to encourage companies to empower men in the workplace this is one of their initiatives there are a lot of other initiatives as well these codes help to offset real or perceived concern that companies move jobs to avoid higher labor or environmental standards in their home markets to address the abuse of labor rates global labor rates so this contributes to raising our standard in the developing world by exporting higher standards to local firms in these countries so whatever standards of human rights and employment rights in developed countries okay, this agreement will help provide a guide to developing countries the UN plays a very important role in human rights and also social issues because they cover human rights, labor, environment and also anti-corruption practices okay. they provide standards that companies should focus on standards that companies can refer 
too. So let's look into the labor standards. First, businesses should uphold the elimination of discrimination. So no discrimination. Abolition of child labor. That is the standard. Eliminate forced and compulsory labor. Also a standard. And uphold the freedom of association, meaning that workers are free to join labor unions. They are free to fight for their rights. Okay. Also, cover standards in human rights, anti-corruption and also environment. So businesses, while they make profit, they should be socially responsible to the environment, to their workers, to the society and to themselves as well. Okay. Next is corporate governance. This is the system by which corporations are directed and controlled. It covers distribution of rights and responsibilities, stakeholder management, rules and procedures, and also decision making. Okay. This becomes more important after a lot of numerous scandals. You can have a look into this. I believe you have heard about the Enron scandal before. Okay. This is observed through the corporate governance perspective. In corporate governance, a lot of continental European countries are inside the systems where ownership are more concentrated and shares owned by holding companies, families or banks. So this determines who decides what. Also, rules and regulations will differ among countries and regions. Okay. For instance, UK and US systems, they use outside the system whereby the ownership of equity is more dispersed using stocks and so on. And they also have large number of outside investors. So each of these governance systems have their own pros and cons. This is also highly related to corruption and government corruption is a pervasive element in internet Government corruption is a pervasive element in international business environment. A lot of corruption issues happen in relationship-based countries, Russia, China, Pakistan, and so on. So there are some evidence that this continuing bribe does not reduce sales of the those products or services in that country. And in some countries, bribes are normalized. Related with culture as well as a country's development levels. As you can see here, the top 10 least corrupted countries are mostly Western countries which are developed. And 10 countries with highest level of corruption are countries that are relationship based, countries that are underdeveloped or developing. Because corruption is such a huge issue, there are global initiatives to increase accountability and to limit corruption. So first is the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, FCPA. So this makes it illegal for US companies and their managers to attempt to influence foreign officials through personal payments or political contributions, basically paying Greece money. So sometimes these contributions can be disguised as entertainment expenses or consulting fees and FCPA is actually be implicated to a lot of other companies as well. So FCPA is one of the reasons why this company this is a Korean company they had to pay 6.3 million penalty for bribing Korean and Vietnamese politicians this is a Korean multinational company and this is a case in Malaysia okay. 
this person who owns a military based company pay bribes being has been paying bribes to navy US navy officials to influence the US uh, military decision makers to buy from him so these are the cases under FCPA and recent formal agreement by many industrialized nations is begin to outlaw the practice of bribing foreign government officials okay, this is done by the OECD signed by 29 members it fails to outlaw most payments to political party leaders but it indicates a growing support for anti bribery initiative so governments and corporations are collaborating to provide assistance to communities and locals through global partnership because there are a lot of problems in the local community in terms of poverty in terms of pollution inequality and so on so a lot of these investments uh, can be seen in these projects controlling and preventing of AIDS, fighting malnutrition, reducing subsidies and trade restrictions, controlling malaria, basically for the benefit of the local society. You can refer to Copenhagen Consensus Development Priorities. What are the projects that are highly valued by the society? So, very good uh, rating combats the challenge of diseases. Okay. I would say this is bad. Uh, this is quite maybe low impact for the society. Okay. But nevertheless, companies should do whatever they can. The UN is also trying their best to set up good standards for companies especially multinational companies doing business in a foreign country we started with the UN Millennium Development Goals there are 8 goals right now there are SDGs Sustainable Development Goals there are 17 of them it covers education, poverty, environment, equality and so on so, Ethics in international management and some of the major ethical issues and problems confronting MNCs in selected countries. We have discussed them as well as the basic philosophies underlying them. We also discussed the pressures on and actions being taken by selected industrialized countries and companies through various cases, Ivory Coast uh, Chocolate Industry, the Oil and Gas industry and a few other examples especially on FCPA we also discussed the initiative to bring greater accountability to corporate conduct and limit the impacts of corruption around the world a lot of organizations are doing this big and small especially UN and OECD to revise this topic you can have a look into this question and discuss among yourself so according to the World Corruption Index countries that score high in corruption are in general Western countries and countries that are low in the index are Eastern countries are corruption practices really relates to culture or not okay. you can have a look into the slides and also use your own references and explain your answers For references, you can have a look into the Environmental Protection Index and also the Corruption Perception Index. Take your time to revise and I will see you in next time.